Hi everyone and welcome to the Witch Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow episode number 32. And as some of you might have seen on the social media this week, I <clears throat> finally found a use case for the History Walker API that I've been looking for quite a while. <clears throat> and sadly it turned out that I could solve it without it. Well, you asked me what that what that API was that I found, so let's let's go through and see what you can use it for. So let's go through my beloved PowerPoint, just a few notes. So if you haven't seen me or heard me before, my name is Goran Lundqvist, AKA The Witch Doctor. Been working with ServiceNow as an application for since 2014, actually. Been a customer, been a client, and for the last almost two years, I'm working at ServiceNow as a developer as well. No, enough about me, you can see there are on my side, you can see my contact notes. I also made it a little bit easier for you to find this channel or my GitHub by using the, the servicenowwishdoctor.com address for you guys as well. Just hook up if you don't haven't already and let's see where that goes. So, agenda, always a big one. How does the API work? Let's take a quick look at that. Let's take a look at that example. And then I'm also going to throw in how you can take this code and then throw it into our later list. Just, just for fun, so you can see how you can do that as well, if you haven't done it. So let me go out of the PowerPoint. Let me just go over here and then in here. So basically, if you go to developer, just going to show you where you can find the documentation. Uh, History Walker. So basically, History Walker is built to go into the audit history and find stuff for you instead of you actually going into that table yourself. So there are quite a few functions. We won't be using all of them. But if you scroll down, you could see the example where you basically go through uh, the history and the different updates and look for different uh, information that you need. And you can actually, when you find what you want, you can actually create a glide record object of that version or what you call it of that uh, uh, record that you're looking at. So you can see you're, you're looking at what kind of priority did it have, didn't it have, and so on but looking at the docs is not so fun so let's let's try it out and see where we go so let me go into my instance and i'm probably going to do this in fixed script so it looks a little bit nicer than um, just the script's background let's call it episode 32 and all the code will be on the github when it's this youtube video is being released as well and I'll put the link to the documentation at the bottom of the YouTube. Uh, let's call it History Walker. So in my case, perhaps I should go through the use case for this example, is, and let me show you, I have a problem. I guess I have a lot of them, but. And the one we are going to use is the 07 one. So you can see this one is in state fixed progress. And if I scroll down, you can see we have five incidents. But what I want to know is which of these incidents has been added to the problem after the problem went into state root cause analyze. Uh, and this is demo data from the instance I'm using, so it can look a little bit weird, but don't care about that. Just use this as a proof of concept. So basically what I will do is I will use the history walker to find out when did the problem go to state root cause analyze. Then I will use that and go to incidents and find which incident were added to the problem after that timestamp where it changed the root cause analyze. And then for the last fun part, I will add that as a related list down here just to show you what you can do uh, and get your, your brain working to do even more fun stuff. So let's go back to the fixed script. 
and you won't you'll see me type i have uh, a few of this stuff already built in so let me just paste in a little bit of the code and you can see what i am doing so let's get over here i'll paste that one in so in this case i'm fetching um, the sysid this is the sysid of the problem i showed you and here is the first line where i start up my api by saying it's the this table and this sysid then i use the function called walk to to actually say i want to go to the update zero and normally if you look just to show you if you look how it looks like if i create a new record oh like this i'll fill in anyone test and hit save now <clears throat> the record is being created so if i go to the the history you can see that all the changes i did was i'm pointing with my finger here, is the update number zero because all that happened the first time now if i go in and change something oh my god uh, do that one and now you can see that this specific updates get update number one and then two uh, and so on and this is where we start going through going through the the lowest number and then we start working us upwards and somehow that was a hard advanced code i did there so here we go let's go to history list and you can see we changed the priority when we did that early to change and we added the new value and you can see old new and all that stuff so what we want to do is we want to walk through the problem record go through that one uh, and this is pretty much like uh, you have dot next when you do die record just walk forward you can actually walk backwards as well if you want to do that so we'll do that and go through each update number and we're using this one to get that record we are right now at if we are on update number one that is the record we get we'll look at what value has state on that object if it has 103, which is the root cause analyze, we want to save that number, the update number. So this is what this line does say, okay, get me that update number. And then I don't need to loop through all the other stuff because now I found what I'm watching. So I'm just breaking out of the while loop. Then what I do is, and this one, I guess I wouldn't need to do that since I'm doing a break. But otherwise I can say walk to and whatever number I want. So I'm going to that number where I know that the state is root cause analyze. Then I want to have that glide record that I was talking about. So I say that uh, the variable old problem, let's get that record. So get walk record, copy. I added the copy. If you get what record, uh, you basically just pointing at that h read h double v problem uh, and i'll show you an issue if it use, doesn't use copy sometimes you don't need it but i'll just use it to be safe and then you can see i'll just show you old problem dot sys update and dot state so you can see that it actually has the root cause analyzed as a state so i'll hit save I'll run that one uh, and here you can see problem record updated for about two hours ago and the state is 103 now just to show you that I'm not fooling around with you is I'll just do like this or get current problem just to show you what happens if we record and i wasn't expected to do this but it would go fast problem if i can spell and i have and i get current 
brb dot get and i know the sysid because i got that one up here and i'll just steal this one and replace it so you can see what the current values are i'll hit save i never learn if the run fix script actually saves or not so run fix script proceed and here you can see that i actually change a little bit later and to the next state which is fixing progress so you can see that the old problem here actually contains an older version of the record which is really good so now we know when the problem changed to root cause analyze now we need to find out which incidents were added afterwards so let me fetch that line or not line it's actually more than one to be honest and copy i'm going to do like this and paste in red so what i'm doing now is i'm going into the incident table saying give me all the incidents where the problem id is the id that we have then I need someone to, to save the incident that I need to know, or the ones that have been added. This is what this array is for. And then when I go through each incident, I need to do the history walk again to see when was the incident added to the problem. So you can say I basically changed the incident table instead, and then I use the while loops record to get the sysid of the current record I'm looping through and basically doing the same stuff i did earlier walk to zeros begin from the start walking forward and i'm taking a look here if the problem field on the record i walk to is the problem sysid and the old record this is the the problem record if the sys up to date on is less than the incident i'm now looking at If that is correct, then we push that number to the array and we're done. So in this case, and since I added these incidents, I think there should be two or three. Let's take a look. Problem, or oh, I have it here. You can see we have five in total. Uh, uh, three of them I actually you can see I updated. So let's run the, the code. Hit save. Run. And now you can see all the incident added. It was that one and that one. So 50 and number two. And I said I added three, right? And the reason was, if I go to the problem, this one, as you can see, if I filter from updated, that's the first one I added. This one is actually added when the problem were in state assess, assess, sorry, assess. Um, so that one didn't count, which is correct. So let's go back to the code. So this is basically the code, if I can get it to full screen. In this case, we go in, walk through the, the problem to find out when it was into that correct state. Then <clears throat> we'll get that one. We'll go into the incident table find out all the incident that is um, connected to a problem and then we we'll go through them and see is it updated or, or not um, and I actually see an issue here that could be an issue um, about this if statement if the walk to problem is the problem ID and the sysid 
is if this one is false it will actually go through the next one and the next one so it can actually give some wrong indications but that's not the 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 solution we're looking from here from here we are basically trying to show you how we can use the history walker so now let's do a, a quick uh, relationship from that one so relationship and then you go down to system definitions relationship we click on a new one I want to call it i'll just call it late so this is the label of the related list so late incidents we want this related list to show up on problem and we're looking for records from the incident table how this works that parent that is the the problem record in this case so you can use that object and current is basically the query that you're running against uh, <clears throat> the incident uh, table in this case. So let's remove this one. I can keep that at the bottom because this is what we, we are going to do just to show you. So I'll fetch the code and we need to change a, a few things. And I'll let you know which one. And here we go. And I'll ban that one. I can do like this as well. So, well, we don't need this one since we're going to use the parent record and it needs to be dynamic. So I'll remove that one. So the problem sys ID, we actually need to replace that one with parent.get unique value. And I'll use. I'm not so. I wonder is do we have replace search and replace here? No. At least we can find them. Uh, problem. This ID right. There we go. So I'll replace that one and that one. There we go. So we're going into the problem table, and of course you can make this more dynamic if you build it on task. By getting the table name instead and so on as well um, going through that we don't need to have that one we're going to instant table fetching those that is an old code as well and then we go through and we don't need this one and we don't either want to have the number we want to have the sys id so at the bottom we would like to have current add query and then we would like to get the sysid and since we have an array of sysid we used in and then we just I see I start with a capital I there so let's do that after after assets that, that that's a good spelling oh my god um there we go so let's hit save let's look at the problem this is reloading that one and of course um it's not down here from beginning we need to go to configure related lists and then it was called the late incidents you can see it's over here oh well, let's fetch it there we go and hit save and we'll wait and see and there we go now we have late incidents and you have the two ones uh, that we should find so that's how you build a related list as well uh, i hope you will have fun with the, the history walker api and can do a lot of cool stuff and uh, I think that's it for me, so see you around.